Hey, I'm Brian from Three Ravens Bushcraft, and today we're going to go over one of the five seeds of survival, combustion. Fire is one of those things that makes our food palatable, keeps us warm, sterilizes water, and lastly, keeps the boogeyman away. Starting a fire in a survival situation sometimes is the thing between life and death. So stick with me, and we'll get right to it. Okay, one of the ways of uh, combustion that we're going to talk about today is, uh, well, right here. No, it's not the flashlight. It's actually the parabolic lens that I want. So I take out my lens here. Nice shiny lens. So what we need to do is we need to capture the light and focus it just like we do when we're using a magnifying glass. And we focus the light and the sun's energy then is concentrated enough to light our tinder. You can see that once it gets exactly where it needs to be, it's almost instantaneous that it lights up. So if I had some different tinder in there, uh, it could actually light right up on me. So that's the parabolic lens. So just the uh, lens instead of your flashlight can be enough to actually get you lit and uh, to get your fire started. So that's that. Another way that uh, we can light fires with through combustion is with flint and steel. This was the way that everybody started a fire uh, up until 1860-ish, uh, once uh, matches were introduced. Uh, so, whether it was the steel that was made by a blacksmith, like this, or it was the steel that was in your knife, like this, or whether it was the steel going back even farther to your sword, it was flint and steel. So, the flint doesn't necessarily need to be flint, the flint needs to be a very hard rock. Uh, so, here in North America we have lots of uh, quartz, uh, but the thing that's important about it is, it must have a nice sharp edge on it somewhere, right? Next thing you need is tinder to put that in. So I have this uh, this char cloth right here. Okay, so char cloth is a nice cotton material or uh, any natural fiber material that we've charred into into charcoal so that it'll take a spark readily. Okay, so I put the, uh, the char cloth on top and then I strike away here. And it doesn't take long before my char cloth is actually lit up. So I take this char cloth now and then I take it and I put it into my tinder bundle, right, my nice bird's nest, and then I have fire. But if you don't actually have a blacksmith in your area and you don't have the, the money to spend, you know, on that kind of stuff. The next thing you can do is use a hacksaw blade. Most hacksaw blade, the cheaper the better, right? So you go to your Princess Auto or your uh, your other uh, thrifty kind of stores, right? You buy a whole pack of, of blades like these for four bucks. So you have tons. How you hold it though is really important. So we make sure that our fingers are lined up across the back side here, supporting the blade thumb is holding the back. Okay, again, nice sharp rock, and then nice sparks. Okay, you know that you're actually getting good sparks and good quality sparks when you can take these sparks and hit them and get them to go all the way down to the ground. Okay, and supporting that, that blade, making sure to use the back of the blade, not the sawtooth side, right? Supporting that blade makes all the difference in the world, okay? If you just try to do it like this, you can't actually support the blade well enough to strike it, because basically what you're trying to do is take a very thin piece of this metal off at a high speed, and that friction then lights this spark, right? 
same thing for your your knife as long as it's a good carbon steel knife so here's my Mora Classic again it's gonna spark up for you just as well make sure you have a carbon steel my next, uh, my next party trick if you will for starting fires is the fire bow okay so the parts of the fire bow are obviously the bow part as you can see mine is pretty straight Okay, the way we've done, uh, the way I've done mine and been taught how to do mine is to have a hole in the top, two nice holes in the bottom. This works like a toggle. We can toggle uh, the, the tension on the string by pulling the string so it's about hand width from uh, the center and then we just tighten it up. And then I just take the excess and wrap it around here. Like so. Okay, the next part is the baseboard. So the baseboard, I've already started my hole on it. Uh, so I've, I've got my spindle. I've got that working in the hole. And uh, it's already starting to, to uh, blacken up here and, and make dust. And then my hand hold here, I use uh, black poplar bark. It uh, makes a very good uh, friction-free type of uh, bearing block to, to push down with and so now how does it all go together so you're gonna need something to collect your dust in so in this case I'll just use this nice leaf and then you take your your spindle you put the the end that will be doing the friction work on the inside and then wrap it around on the outside okay and then your bearing block on top of that and then away you go. Once you think you got it, Go 30 times as fast as hard as you can. Okay, from here you can relax. All the hard work is done. The ash will. Uh, Continue to stay there for up to about 20 minutes on some of the tests that I've done. So relax, get your breathing sorted out, and then transfer your, your ash to your tinder bundle. All right, the next one we're gonna talk about here is the ferrocium rod. So the ferrocium rod is basically a mix up of metals. We have uh, some magnesium in there, uh, which will give us uh, some good uh, burning materials of metals if we want to. Um, and because of the friction that you introduce with the back of your blade, as well as uh, the type of metal buildup, uh, you get a spark. The spark that comes off of it is somewhere in the area of about 1500 degrees so it's a very hot spark so we can take this no matter if it's wet or if it's cold or any other way and we can get a spark off so let's see if we can do that now so we just take the back of our knife we have our birch bark here that's already prepared and 
put some sparks into it. And there you go. Nice and simple. Life is good. We have fire. Oh. Matches. You can have Strike Anywhere matches. You can have windproof matches, which on a day like today might not be too bad. And then you can have uh, just the normal standard book of matches uh, that uh, you need to have actual paper to, uh, to strike them on. Uh, these are actual Strike Anywhere matches. I just glued a piece of paper on the side of this tin to uh, make sure if uh, I couldn't get it off my zipper or something else uh, that I could light it that way. Okay, so we're going to light a match. First thing you want to do is support the head. So we hang on to the match like, like so and we support the head with our middle finger like so. Okay, this way when we light the match we'll be able to cup it and let the flame grow before we put it into our tinder. Okay, if you just strike it like this, it's a good chance you could just break it. Okay, so two fingers, third one just supports the match head. Right, so we cup the flame, letting it grow so that it gets nice and strong. Matches of this sort, the household wooden match types, will generally last in the area of about 15 to 20 seconds. And now, put that onto your tinder, and away you go. Matches. Okay, and the last one that I have with me today anyways, is just the standard Bic lighter. Now, there's different types of lighters out there. You have your, your Zippos, and you have those butane torch types, and you have your Bic. But the Bic for, you know, $1.29 will give you lots of fires, if you know what you're doing with it. The problem with Bics is that, one, you can't boost the, the uh, flame on the back. So you can't make the flame bigger on the back if it's not quite what you need, because it's too windy or, or whatever. Uh, and two, uh, it doesn't give you a very big flame. So, as you can see, my flame is just shooting off because of the wind. So, again, hide your flame, protect it from the wind, and you can see how it's harder to get lit than the match was. Okay, last thing is tinder, right? Now, tinder needs to be anything small enough to take a spark, okay? This isn't actually tinder, it's kindling. But, because it's birch bark, it's probably one of the best things you can have out here in the boreal forest. Being birch bark, it's full of birch oil, so you can see that nice blackness that's on there, that's from the oil itself. Um, so even if this is completely soaked, this is a valuable resource for starting fire out in the wild. Is, uh, don't do what a lot of people do out here. And so I came here, I marched in here about uh, 5k or so away from the trailhead. I get here, it's a beautiful place, they've got a nice cabin for you, they've got a nice uh, outhouse and everything else here. And they have a nice little outdoor fire pit and what do you suppose is in it? That's right, garbage. People put garbage in the fire pit thinking the next person that comes along will start a fire and burn their garbage for them. Or even worse, they think that somebody from the park will come by and pick it up for them. Completely unacceptable. So you know what, I'm gonna have to hump this garbage out now and take this back to the car so that uh, it doesn't stay out here. So if you hump it in, hump it out, okay? Pack in, pack out, right? No, leave no trace camping. That was combustion, part of the five C's of survival. We uh, went over flint and steel, friction fire, parabolic lens, matches, lighter. I think that was it. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you learned something. And uh, stay tuned because I'm going to finish off this series of five C's uh, hopefully sooner rather than later. So have a great time and stay safe out there. Cheers. When you leave, this is how a fire pit should look like, right? Yeah.
Pack out all your garbage with you. Don't leave it out in the woods. Nobody's here to pick up after you.